The throaty wail of the ceremonial horns herald the opening of the annual ritual called Rinzi Tare, the most important ceremony at Gyansi Monastery. This, like all other religious ceremonies, is dramatic proof to the people that the priests of the Lama Church have overpowered and subdued the evil spirits. This particular pageant makes a bid for prosperity during the coming year. By the time we witnessed the ceremonies at Gyansi, we began to feel that religion is the predominant influence that controls the people of this vast land. The wizard priest wearing beautiful robes of Chinese brocade hundreds of years old and elaborate headdresses crowned with ornamental coil serpents engage the evil spirits, eventually overpowering them, thereby assuring the people of continued prosperity. The skeleton dancers representing evil spirits who assail helpless mankind. The dance of the lion spirits. And the dwarfs representing the friendly spirits of India. In the initial part of this ceremony, the evil spirits do their dancing unmolested and represent the threatening forces to be overcome by the church. And down the loaded air there comes the thunder of Tibetan drums. The spirits continue their menacing ritual. Every year this little skit is presented reenacting a dream of the late Dalai Lama in which an old man overpowers a tiger, thereby proving the indomitable strength of humanity. The rug on the ground symbolizes suffering mankind. Ghouls dance around it, but the spirit is protected by the powers of the lamas. The wizard priests with their black hats enter the dance and overpower the evil spirits. Here the rug symbolizes the enemies of the church. An evil spirit that has been coerced by the wizard priests performs around this figure. In the center are the heart, lungs, liver, and intestines of the enemy, which are hypothetically torn from the body and thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil and wine and dramatically destroyed. The Kamba dancers roam about Tibet in troops, living on the bounty of their audiences. They give performances in the small villages, in the streets, at the homes of the wealthy, and anywhere they can find spectators to contribute. This particular troupe is considered the most talented in all Tibet and came to Lhasa for the five weeks of the New Year Festival. In the great religious communities, they furnish the only entertainment of a theatrical nature. Their steps are the closest relation to folk dancing that is known in Tibet. Although the capers and gyrations can hardly be called original, they do give us an insight into the characteristics of the Tibetan people. Few races would have the stamina to engage in this performance, especially in the rarefied air of 12,000 feet. And yet these entertainers may put on several shows a day. The Tibetans populate a country where only the rigorous may survive. These folks laugh readily, have a happy disposition, make friends quickly, and rivalry is always good-natured. The grand finale of their performance is the free-for-all competition of the leading dancers. They choose their own style and give it their all. 